So next speaker is Yannick that you already know, I guess. And so he will talk about how to use uh, extraction. But actually, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, it's a bit different. So talking about Lambda Box and Metacog. It, it's a new talk. You have not seen this before. <laughs> I was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I have more than one. <laughs> um, the microphone's working? Cool, okay. Yes, so the title of the talk is Aspects of a Machine-Checked Intermediate Language for Extraction from Coq in Metacoc. Um, this part of the bigger project that going, and I'm going to talk about at the end uh, is joint work with Mathieu, but in fact, lots of people are, are involved in the cosmos of the project. Um, and as Nicola expected, it is about extraction. Um, extraction in Coq was developed first in Pierre Letouzy's PhD thesis. You can probably not see that but it was handed in on the 9th of July, 2004, so it turns 18 almost now. Um, and yes, and it's, I would say, one of the central claims of fame of COG, ComCert relies on it, lots of other industrial projects rely on it because you can out some, get out something in OCaml, in Haskell, in Scheme, and execute this program without having to see what happened in COG before. And Mathematically, it works by first erasing, erasing types in proof into an uh, untyped lambda calculus, which is called lambda box. It looks like the lambda calculus underlying the calculus of inductive constructions. The difference is that uh, all the types are gone, and there's a box thing which says there was something computationally irrelevant, so either a type or a proof at this position before. And all of our work is carried out in the Metacog project, so one or two words on this. Um, in the essence, Metacog is a formalization of Coq in Coq. As for other interesting type systems, we prove important results like confluence, validity, subject reduction. We have a theorem that says that values of first order inductive terms um, can be found by weak Kolber value evaluation. So Give, give a hint at with what evaluation strategy to use. Um, we have several machine check programs in COC. We have a correct and complete type checker. We have the erasure procedure mentioned before into an untyped version of COC, which removes proofs and types. And um, it's a big project. There are lots of people involved. I listed the people, I copy pasted the faces, or maybe the uh, former faces um, of the people. Some of the pictures are a bit older. Um, involved in the project and lots of people are working on different aspects. Uh, the vision kind of is that we can have a fast kernel for daily use, Coq has that, and maybe a verified kernel that you run once in a month to make sure that everything is really, really waterproof. <coughs> More than waterproof. Uh, there are a couple of things missing currently in Metacoq. We don't have ETA conversion specified and built in. You can talk, for instance, to Maven and the other people uh, involved if you want to find out more. We don't cover S-prop yet, but Jan is working on that as an intern currently here, so he's also around. You can talk on to him later. We don't cover modules yet. You can talk to Yijan, he's around here. And we don't cover template polymorphism. There's a bigger story behind it. You can talk to all of us, I guess. <laughs> and now, the next thing we're missing is we want to do a verified extraction, really prove that all of the, the extraction process is correct. Um, the steps that we have is that we started the representation of things in the Coq kernel, and as part of Metacoq, we have template Coq, which is essentially a Coq representation of what's happening in OCaml. So it's more or less a copy paste of the OCaml data type, up to some, some minor changes. And then we have Pickwick, which is more in the style of the type theory you would formalize, which is, has a couple of nicer properties, gives you better inductions, but it's it's the same system. We can translate from the one into the other. It's not idealized. It is idealized, but not in the sense that we, that we um, forget about what, what really is there. It's, it's still the same, the same system. And then we go from there from Lambda Box. That's, that's what I already mentioned. And now we can go to, to several targets. There are several projects doing verified extraction. There's Certicoc, where we, where they, we do compu compilation to see light. There's the Concert project where they extract to blockchain languages and use this first part of the pipeline from Metacog. And there's our work on um, replacing Cox extraction process to OCaml by a verified implementation written in, in the Metacog um, Cosmos. Mm. In 
the end to understand what's going on in extraction and how to prove things, um, there are a couple of subtle differences between COC and the operational semantics of COC and the operational semantics of target language. So in COC and in Lambda Box as the, the first intermediate language, um, fixed point reduction is structural, meaning there's one structural argument and this structural argument has to expose a constructor, otherwise the fixed point rule doesn't trigger. Constructors are higher order. You can map cons over a list. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to write map XL cons XL, something like this. You can pass around constructors completely higher order. In Lambda box, you can match on a box <coughs> because in cock you can match on a proof. If you erase the proof, a box remains. Now you have a rule to match on a box to make everything uh, easy. Everything is implemented using the Brown indices. And the thing that complements the structural fix is a match with patterns. In the first thing you would do in C and in the OCaml representation used in the compiler in Lambda, things are different. You don't have a structural fix, you have letrec. And letrec will reduce once there's an argument. You don't, you don't have to wait for the structural argument. Constructors are blocks. You cannot map cons over a list in, in, in OCaml. The best you can do is you have to write map, as I said, fun Excel. Um, you cannot match on functions, and we're implementing box as function in, in OCaml because uh, that gives using a fixed point the right roots. Things are specified in a named way. And in C and in, in Lambda, you, uh, you have not really a match construct, but just projecting out. You have a switch which tells you which constructor it is, and a projection which gives you the field of the constructor. Okay. And Mm. In the end, we want to go to several targets, to OCaml, to see to what's happening in concert. And all of, these all of these issues occur. Ideally, we have a good solution in a central place, because if we solve the issues for just OCaml, somebody has to redo the work for C, and that's not, not the most satisfying in the end. So we try to avoid doing work twice, and we do it by doing all of these changes already on Lambda Box. So what we have is we have a, a class which says, okay, we are looking at this or this or this or this version of Lambda Box. It's like a record. I'm, I'm showing Cox syntax. If you don't, can't read Cox, um, it's, it's gone in 10 seconds again. Um, so we say we have something like, can you match on a, on a box or not? Is the fix guarded or structural or not? Are constructors blocks or not? And then the evaluation relation, the weak call by value evaluation relation is parameterized in these flags. And then when you have a rule, here are the two rules for structural fix, where we say, okay, with guarded fix, with structural fix, and here are the ones without, where you say, okay, this flag is false. So depending on how you set the flag, you get the one or the other relation, and then you do the meta theory of all this parameterized for all flags. And then you can do, um, you can do the rest. Quick interlude. Mm, in the end, we are working in a in a realistic setting. We're trying to prove the things for COC as they are in reality because we want guarantees for programs that fall out in reality and not for, for something slightly idealized. That means we're looking at all of the nice features of COC that normally I studied in a more isolated sense in papers because that gives, gives you the essence of what's happening in this big setting, which blows things up a bit, maybe a lot. Um, we often know that we have a theorem which is true, which is good but uh, not enough. We often know that there is a proof of a theorem, um, but again, not really enough. We often know that there's a proof of this theorem or a related theorem that we could formalize, and sometimes we know that we have a proof of a theorem that can be formalized in something less than a week. And for auxiliary results, that's what you have to aim for. Uh, the, at some point, we need to produce results, and uh, if every auxiliary result takes a year, that's not the way to go. Um, all of the problems I mentioned before are solvable by talking about observational congruence, observational equivalence. Um, so we could go this way. We know that probably all theorems that you can state with regard to that are true. We know that you can prove them because in the end it's standard techniques. It's not so clear how easy it is to formalize because we have a calculus with, I think, 17 constructors and then observational uh, equivalence formalized there. It's untyped is going to cause pain. Um, however, all problems that we have, all the differences are in the end easy to solve for terms where all constructors and fixed points are iter-expanded. 
So you don't pass around higher order constructors. You always have them expanded with all their arguments. You don't pass around fixed points without applying it to all its arguments first. Um, and and that's a weaker, a weaker theorem that you can prove is that for all eta expanded things, everything works out. And that's what we're going to do in the end because it's still going to be fine and I explain this in a minute. I want to say here that um, we often have to restructure proofs. We find a nice theorem in the literature with a nice proof, but it's not really the way to go to formalize it that way because it, it would be, it builds on too much theory. So we try to restructure proofs in a way which give us a more economical proof, maybe with a little bit of a weaker theorem, but enough for what we actually want. And the other thing is that proof engineering becomes central at some point. We are missing a couple of your ice features in Koch. We are missing nested induction principles. And Thomas, who is also around, is working on, on uh, solving that problem. So at least we don't have to prove induction principles manually. Now, an overview of what we are doing. It starts as before in the Koch kernel. And then we translate to, to template Koch without any invariance. Now it's the first pass, we have a pass on template cock where we just go through the term and eta expand all constructors and all uh, fixed points. When you have a predicate and say everything is finally eta expanded. Now we cannot prove inside metacock that the two things are convertible because we are missing eta. If we would have that, everything would be fine. We don't, so while waiting for a solution to this problem, um, we just pass the thing back to the cock kernel and ask the cock kernel to quickly check that we didn't do anything wrong. Optionally, you can also see that we are not doing anything wrong because eta expansion is not actually a, a complicated operation. Um, and then we start at this where all proofs work out nicely and at some point we'll have a full proof of everything. And then first we go to Pickwick, keeping the invariant that everything is nicely eta expanded. Um, then we have a pass where we make sure that the annotated names are not shadowing because we need that to go to a name language in the end. Then we remove lets from constructor types because that makes a couple of things a bit more tedious than they should be. Then we go to lambda box, to first erasure, with a structural fixed rule, with higher order constructor, and with match on boxes enabled, prove that all the invariants are preserved. Then we switch off the structural fixed rule, switch to a unary fixed rule, have an identity transformation. You don't actually have to change the term. You just change the relation. We prove that this works out, relying on eta expandedness on fixed points, um, keeping eta expanded of, of constructors, keeping well-formedness of names. Next step, we remove parameters from inductive types because that gives you more efficient programs in the end, um, keeping all the invariants uh, there. Then we go to a version where we do not match on boxes by doing a proof term transformation where we see a match on box and then actually by replacing it by the thing it should reduce to and that's going to work out. And then we go to the last one where we have constructors as blocks and then just have a, ter a term with the brown indices but nicely annotated no names that we can then send to other languages um, that we want to send it to. So the thing we are working towards uh, currently is that we want to give a verified implementation of Cox extraction to OCaml, formalize Cox and Cox check, that's, that's done in MetaCox. Uh, formalize a variant of OCaml. We're targeting immediately the intermediate language of the compiler. You can talk to us about it. Re-implement extraction. That's basically done, um, at least for, for a good subset of things. And we need to prove that this is correct, connecting the operational semantics of Coq with the operational semantics of what we have for OCaml. Uh, joint work with Mathieu, Pierre, Pierre-Marie, and Nicolas, which uh, brings me to the end of the talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. question and maybe I invite the next speaker to go down. I could ask a question but it will be a bit silly because you are allowed to ask <laughs> a silly question. Gaetan will ask a question it will be a bit less silly. So what are uh, the missing UI features uh, other than nested induction principles? Things like clicking on a name and seeing it, which works in proof general, and seeing the definition which works in proof general, which doesn't work for us because it cannot really mm, 
process big enough files well enough. So we're using VS Cock, uh, which doesn't have this feature. And I know that things are coming soon, and I'm, I'm trying to um, mention that all of the things that hopefully come soon are really needed on our end. Okay. Uh, about extraction, you said that you were erasing all the proofs. So I, I suppose that are terms that live in prop. And uh, how are you dealing with uh, singleton elimination, which usually computes on the actual proofs? Um, everything deals with singleton elimination as it is in Coq. And that was already solved by Pierre, and it's not a problem because you end up first on match something. So yes, singleton elimination can compute on a proof, but it is allowed because it's not actually exhibiting any interesting content. You can only do singleton elimination on boring things. And that's why we can remove matches on boxes because they didn't contribute anything anyways. So we propagate it, and then we know by the properties of singleton elimination that everything was fine. But we have to talk about this explicitly, and we have to show that singleton elimination as is does not actually break something, so that singleton elimination really only allows computationally irrelevant eliminations. I guess the question was about the accessibility predicate and, and fixed point that you can define. So <coughs> we, we allow singleton eliminations on accessibility, but they are done in the erase program which you don't, you don't want to see the, the matches on accessibility anyways in your OCaml program because OCaml doesn't need a match on anything to, to, to have a fixed point. Yeah. But th this, this will work in the end. You, you, start, you write something with, uh, as it works currently, you write something with um, very well-founded recursion on accessibility, and <coughs> this will be done by the time it reaches the target language. Okay, thank you. It's kind of magic a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Verified. <laughs> Very fine magic. <laughs> okay, let's thank the speaker again.